Conservative MP Dan Show completely dismantles and calls out the Greens, the Bloc, the NDP, and the Liberals for their attempt to politicize the foreign interference scandal that's running through Canada. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling, and I'm your host. As many of you are likely aware, the RCMP recently leveled allegations of criminality at the Indian government's representatives inside of Canada, that they were partaking in crimes on Canadian soil. And I believe that the Prime Minister of Canada acted rashly, which has resulted in the complete deterioration and breakdown of our diplomatic ties. They are in tatters as a result of his behavior or his actions. However, there was a, because of the leveling of the criminality, there was a meeting called by the Standing Committee on Public Safety and National Security, and there was a motion introduced by the NDP, a 106B, I believe it is. And they went through all the, the parliamentarians all spoke, and everybody, even the Greens, were represented. And they were about to adjourn the meeting that they had, they had this witness list of people that they want to call to talk to about this uh, foreign interference problem. And they were about to adjourn the meeting and the NDP, the same individual, the same NDP member introduces a new motion where he says that, like, so a second motion where he says that he feels that Pierre Polyev should go and get the security clearance. Now, if I knew nothing about the situation and I just was standing back and looking at it here, I would see that the liberals, the NDP, the green and the Bloc all want Pierre Polyev to go and get this security clearance. That is enough for me to say, no, I'm good, thanks. The fact that they're all trying to do it for now what must be, feels like two years is enough for me to say, no, I'm good, thanks. Like, I don't need to know anything else. I just need to know that everybody is, is, is just so hot to trot for this, that there can't be anything in this action that is good for the conservative player. Just can't be. If there were, they wouldn't be trying to push it on them. However, aside, like leaving that aside, the conservatives counter with an amendment to the motion saying, we want the 11 names released. Well, this caused everybody <laughs> to start to go into a meltdown. And they all had a turn about why the names shouldn't be released, but the security clearance and there, you know, there's a lot of content there and I, I am going to break it down to you. However, MP Dancho completely, I mean, she, she, dismantles everything they had to say and rips them a new one and never once raises her voice never once like it it, it, it was it, it was really excellent to watch so that's what we're going to watch right now <laughs> we're going to watch her completely embarrass them all and do it in such a calm manner calm and rational manner that it, it, it's worth watching this amendment to ensure that the names are released would be in line with a number of what our allies do, for example, United Kingdom, rightfully names and shames any members of parliament who are acting in a tre- treasonous manner or who are colluding with foreign countries to undermine the United Kingdom's uh, national interest. And I do believe that Canada should be doing the same. And I agree with my colleague, Dane Lloyd, that otherwise, you know, the prime minister seems to just be weaponizing this so-called secret information that he continues to talk about without actually saying the names to his own advantage. And I certainly would agree with the former NDP leader uh, who, you know, um, sort of be won many more seats than the current leader of the NDP and has said again just recently, I agree completely with Mr. Polyev's decision not to take the bait that is he's referring to uh, Mr. Trudeau's uh, allegation or Mr. Trudeau's claims. He said Trudeau has been trying for a year and a half to restrain what Pierre Polyev can do by trying to say, come on, get this private briefing and oh, by the way, then you'll be held to an official secret and you won't be able to talk about this anymore. So it's seems notable and um, frankly formidable NDP former leaders would agree with Pierre Polyev, our leader of the Conservative Party, that any effort to to do this is really an effort to to put him under some sort of gag order so he can't uh, really do his duty to hold the Prime Minister accountable for matters of foreign interference. So it's interesting to see now under Mr. Singh that uh, Mr. Singh is working hand in hand with Mr. Trudeau yet again to try to gag order Pierre Polyev from being able to speak about this issue 
issue. So it's interesting that Mr. Singh recently made a big show of ripping up some so-called, uh, you know, it was really an informal coalition with the Liberal government, but it would appear now they're really helping Mr. Trudeau to carry carry water on uh, on the you know really shameless partisan politics he's playing in the foreign interference inquiry, which until this point has been a quite a serious and respectable and uh, professional undertaking until the prime minister decided to make some sort of ruthless and shameless political show in a circus out of the whole affair. And I think what's really important for this committee to remember, and certainly Canadians will, that the prime minister, Justin Trudeau, had to be dragged kicking and screaming into this foreign interference inquiry. You'll remember, Mr. Chair, that he had first denied there was any election interference from China, for example, denied anything was going on with the member of Don Valley North in that nomination. And yet here we are in a foreign interference inquiry, and not only is there clear interference from China, but also from India and from Iran and Pakistan and Russia. We have, in fact, at the worst point in history when it comes to foreign interference, and we've had the same prime minister, Justin Trudeau, for nine years. So what does that say about his leadership or lack thereof? And I would also point out that the person in this country most responsible for foreign interference and preventing it and keeping national security safe is the prime minister of Canada. And so if we've had the same prime minister of Canada, and now this has come to such a point that 13 individuals, the RCMP had to announce 13 individuals are in peril because foreign interference has gotten so bad. What does that really say about his leadership? So what's interesting to me is that in the foreign interference inquiry, which he's made a farce of with his recent partisan attacks, that he's really trying to, to, to do two things. Number one, distract from his failed record to prevent foreign interference in this country. The fact that he's created an environment that's worse than ever at any time in Canadian history of foreign interference, that other foreign adversaries and others feel that, that we are a weak country that they can bully under Prime Minister Trudeau's so-called leadership. And the second thing, of course, Mr. Chair, is that the Prime Minister is trying to distract from the fact that he has an ongoing revolt in his caucus looking to overthrow him. <laughs> so it's no wonder why he's doing this, but certainly if he continues, as a colleague said, to weaponize this, then he should release the names because Canadians deserve to know who it is in Parliament right now or in, in the past who has been undermining the national interest on purpose uh, to aid a foreign country. They absolutely deserve to know that, and those individuals need to be held accountable. And I would also say that it's interesting that he won't do so. And I wonder why that is. Well, perhaps it's because out of any party, it makes the Liberal Party look bad. Again, he was the one who denied that there was election interference from China, for example. He's the one who denied there was any issue here at all. And yet here we are. So he continues to deny that there's any issue there. But I would suspect that's why he's not releasing the name. So I think we could put this to bed. It's rapidly devolving into some McCarthy witch hunt as a result of the Prime Minister's actions. And I think we can easily clear this up today by releasing the names. Canadians deserve to know and the Prime Minister should be showing leadership in this regard and ensuring that he's actually taking action on this intelligence. And I would say in the last thing, Mr. Chair, that it's not clear why the why we're taking intelligence if we're not able to utilize it to ensure that these individuals are held accountable. And if they're semi-witting or unwittingly knowing, then they should know and they should be informed. And so I think it is imperative that Parliament learn who these people are, if any, and and move forward with that information. And Mr. Chair, I'd also say that, again, the responsibility for national security lies with the Prime Minister. The only reason we are here is because he's failed to protect that, Mr. Chair. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, I found that whole thing to be very impressive, that she would say all of those burns, all of those digs, never once stopping to, you know, like the, the body language was very restrained, that her tone of voice was very restrained. She engaged the chair the whole time. Like the, all of that was very professional. And I think that the message that she sent while maintaining that level of prof professionality was impressive, as well as uh, many of the things that she said were, were pretty good burns on the liberal government, uh, especially if you were in the room, like if you had heard some of the other things that were being said, I mean, it was it, it pretty, uh, it, it was getting pretty, like she said, a witch hunt, right? Like it was, it was getting pretty tense. And then she just comes in with this and just levels the room, right? Like it, it was, it was pretty impressive. Now it's not over. The, the meeting will continue again on Tuesday, but I wanted to show you that to let you know that what the kinds of things that were going on. And I will do a deeper dive into this, uh, security clearance but i know that they've been trying to get the security clearance since to get paul uh paul you have to take the security clearance for a long time and he's not allowed to talk about it so why bother and he's not allowed to say anything so why bother i mean 
all the other leaders have some have this security clearance and they're not allowed to say anything about it. So it makes no sense. If for whatever reason the documents were leaked and it fell into the lap of Pierre Polyev, he could say something and not, not break a law. Whereas if you give him the, the security clearance, then let him read it in and then somebody smuggles them out or whatever it is, leaks, or what do you call that, whistle blows, he's not allowed to do anything out with it. It makes no sense. It only makes sense if you look at it from the fact that somebody else wants him to do it, so it can't be good for him. It's got to be good for them. That's my opinion on that. All right, I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you all for listening. I'll talk to you next time.